that would be a major turn on for me. You could lose five inches, still be tall, and put them, <laughs> put them somewhere else. Blondie one, two, three. <laughs> Sex goddess. <laughs> you see my feet? <laughs> <laughs> the desperate for attention. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy. And me, Peter Crouch. And, you know, we're pre-recording this. We've recorded this so you are not alone on Boxing Day. We need to be in your ear, loud and fun, and bring in that post-Christmas cheer. That was really Christmas cheery. That was lovely, that. Yeah? Yeah, I think on Boxing Day, most families want to kill each other now. Mm. Uh, Christmas is kind of period is slightly hung over. You're on Boxing Day. Um <laughs> We're here to kind of help you through that relationship crisis, I think. Yeah. You know, it is a bit of therapy. Um, take, you know, go take the dog out for a walk on your own, listen to the therapy crouch, get you through it. You'll come back revitalised and you won't want to kill your partner. Exactly. How does Boxing Day generally panel for you guys? Any... Well, Boxing Day, normally Pete goes to work and I'm left with four kids, with toys to build, a house that's like a bomb's gone off, <laughs> dishes out of my ears and leftover turkey. <laughs> Chicken dinner. I like to get out and, you know... Listen to the, the therapy football. coach. <laughs> to the football, usually. <laughs> yeah. This isn't going to be a typical episode because, you know, it's we're going to be... It's Christmas and we're going to be too full to talk, to, you know, eating our Christmas dinners and drinking our Christmas drinks. So we're and, and the producers are going away on holiday again. Yeah, really. We couldn't <laughs> we couldn't do this live because our producers are going on holiday. Is that right, Ross? I'm I'm here on the 26th. I'm a boss. <laughs> well, we can get yourself over then. I can record one. <laughs> if you follow us on our socials, you'll see that we've been putting up various messages about ask us anything. And you've been in touch and I quite like them. But before we get into that, we're going to do the weekly wines and I am going to refrain from a weekly wine. You, because it's Christmas. Yourself, I am. Do a shine then? Well, I you don't want to give you a shine either. or a wine because, you know, at the time of record, it hasn't been Christmas. So I don't know if I'm going to be delighted with my Christmas presents, therefore a shine, or, you know, devastated by them, which would be why, a wine. Why does it weigh on what you get for Christmas? It should be the, just enough to see my happy, smiley face on Christmas Day. It's not, it's not all weighed on what I've got you. No, I know I know that and I'm not materialistic, but it's just because of your history, your present buying history. Mm. It needs, you know, it, it's been talked about so much on this podcast and, you know, you've admitted yourself that you're going to appreciate me more and show me how much you love me. I show you every day how much I love you. You mean the world to me. Well, I want that to reflect in your gift. <laughs> That's what I mean. This is the kind of pressure that I'm put under over Christmas. Well, I just told no you today, I, I said champagne kind of glasses. Champagne glasses. Champagne, some champagne glasses. All right. Make a note of that, Pete. How do you think you've done so champagne. far, Pete? I'm sure you've got some stuff in the bag already. Uh, how do you think you've done? Well, there's a, there's a stuff few, in the bag? few irons in the fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I'm, I'm pleased with how it's progressing. I've got my bubble coat. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that you bought, that you brought to the till. Mm. I thought you meant to forget about that. I am, but I've just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> you what, give me that, actually, so I have can you, wrap Have it. you done your Christmas shopping? No, I haven't. You asked me last week, and I, st I still haven't made any progress. I'm very much last minute Lil. I like to get up to Liverpool on, like, the 21st of December, hit town, 22nd. It's a nice day out, isn't it? Wrap the presents, 23rd. Enjoy the 24th. Oh, John wraps his on Christmas morning. <laughs> Christmas Eve at, like, midnight. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, that's when I wrap It's going to be isn't? sad not having Johnny this year. No, no one to cook you dinner. No one to cook me dinner. Okay, have we got any audience wines? Yeah, got loads of them. Okay, yeah, the first one's actually a shine, believe it or not. I uh, love the shines. Okay, this was, I just said, I love your podcast. Uh, I'm a first time mum to a seventh, to seventh month, month old twins. Oh, and to say these last age. seven months have been a challenge would be an understatement. Two screaming babies with colic while my husband works has been such a challenge, both mentally and physically. When I'm on my own, it can feel so horribly lonely. But I put your podcast on and I laugh so much, it makes me feel better. Just ordered your book uh, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Wishing you Good both... Good luck with that, with twins. <laughs> <laughs> Should yeah. be able to read a book ever again. <laughs> never, Please never stop making this podcast. That's lovely. That Aww. is a nice one. God, twins. 
we basically had Irish twins, didn't we? A year apart and that was hard enough, like a toddler and a newborn. I don't know how people do it with twins. There's a, a friend of mine's actually got triplets. Oh, can God. you believe? No way. And how can you even carry that? Like, I don't know. Well, she's she's an incre incredible woman. She's actually gone back to work already because she's like, it's easier to go to work than, you know, <laughs> be at home with these. But, you know, to see triplets in the flesh, it's I'm like, that is such a miracle. She's got like a little cart and they're all like strapped in. Jack, when he sees them, absolutely loves them, doesn't he? Like three babies, Aww. two little boys and a girl. It's just gorgeous. Do you think it's a bit like puppies though, where if you get more than one at once, they kind of look after themselves. That You know, the way Ralphie's looking, getting looked after by Jeffrey, sometimes it could be a blessing. Yeah, but if they're both all at the same stage, who's going to be the leader? <laughs> yeah. I always think if one wakes up crying, it kind of wakes the other two up. Mm, it does, yeah. That's a good point. That is, but, but, it's like they always seem to be how crying. Do feed, <laughs> how do you feed them on your own? Unless you're breastfeeding, because you can put one on each boob, but two oh, bottles. Yeah, three boobs. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the twins now. <laughs> Oh, please. <laughs> Not unless you're on Mars Attacks. Yeah. I left up like the, 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 the dad and meet the fuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rubber boob. <laughs> oh, no, I, th I think it's a miracle. And I hope she's um, going to get some help off her husband when he's off work this Christmas. I'm sure she will. She'll put feet up. Mm. I'm sure he won't go out and box it He's going to have a great Christmas. Isn't he? <laughs> I've got a weekly wine just quickly after, after the shine there. Um, just like the fact that we sat here and just listened to you make a nail appointment when we're all ready to go. What's that all about? I was waiting for you guys. No, first. we were ready to record. We were like, right, let's. Re Sorry, just one second. I thought you had a really important call to make. Well, it is really important. Have you seen my feet? <laughs> <laughs> They're desperate for attention. <laughs> I haven't had a pedicure in so long, and you know, I, I didn't think like when we were all ready to go to record the podcast that it was re really the right. I just time. suddenly thought, oh my god, I've got to do my nails. So that's it. Not all we can do about that. No, it? but to be fair, she did sound short in appointments, so maybe you did need to ring. That. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm normally well organised by now, but because I've been doing all your shit, I, know. <laughs> I haven't. Fair enough. All right, let's do another wine. This wine isn't aimed at anyone in particular, but more society in general. Uh, why, oh, why does it seem, if you haven't got a degree in IT, that you cannot be a normal functioning member of society these days, contactless, QR codes, Apple IDs, face recognition, which never seems to work for me, as I always look horrendous, the cloud, online reservations, the lot. What happened to the days where you could go to the bank, speak to a person, withdraw your cash, go to the pub, order at the bar, pay in cash, and leave someone a tip? Yeah. Oh, I kind of agree with it. With Do this. you know what? Do you know what my biggest bugbear is? The frigging online menu, the QR code oh, menu. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to be like scrolling through my phone when I'm at a restaurant. It's part of the thing, isn't it? Get a lovely, oh, no. get a gorgeous menu on that gorgeous paper, open it up. You it's know, like, even McDonald's, I hate going in there, the bloody touch yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got to there. eat, <laughs> then you've got to eat your food after you've touched this grubby screen. And then you've got all everyone's germs all over your fingers. And, and obviously with McDonald's chips, you eat them at your hands. So, now, you have to order pressing on the thing, then wash your hands. Your bloody food's freezing by the time you eat it. The worst one has to be the when you go into sh when you're shopping. Yeah. What, you now have to cash out. You have to just check out yourself. And the barcodes never wear when you scan the oh, yeah, and you it's put always it like an un, un, unidentified object. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the baggage area. Yeah. And then that, there's no fucking bags. Oh, my. <laughs> that, that, that whole sh shopping stuff, that's not for me, that. And like we're fairly bring like, back humans, I say. We're fairly like young as well, well, some of us more than others. But you think like if imagine you're like me and Anna Teresa, like how would you wear checking out yourself? Do you know what I mean? That's just never gonna happen. There's is like it? two people, there's a massive queue. Yeah. You're like, you kind of have to do it, don't you? Especially if you've just got a little I basket. I, I think it's to get people's fingerprints. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on board with that. I'm all over that. You well, your face, rec your face recognition as well. Face recognition, fingerprints mm. on everything. Like, you know, when we're going into you know, Bangkok, it's like, put, put your, put you your finger in there, put you your thumb. You know spending habits because it's all online on your card and all yeah, that. Yeah, I just think it's so dodge. Yeah. Look into, there are it. Look into it, guys. Look into it. it. Like, this Apple Pay's ledge. You just have... have yeah, it but it's, it is and it isn't because with Apple Pay, you just think it's you've got loads of money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> are you, are you, yeah, you just get... It's like nothing when you count... If you had like £100 in your yeah. pocket and you'd be like, oh... Just paid sixty pound in M and S. Now I've got forty left. That'll do, get, get me three cocktails. You know. Now you're just like beep beep beep, and then you're like, 
<laughs> Where's all it gone? Where's it all How gone? How much did you spend today? I don't know, five beeps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five, six beeps? <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> but I like it, though. No, it is good. And I like, I even like the way it kind of vibrates when it, I like the way it's, I tell you what I like. Vibration. I tell you what I like because I always have. <laughs> I do enjoy it. Every time I go to a checkout, you know, if I'm doing online shopping, yeah. it goes, it transfers me to the bank or to the phone, and you then you yeah. get text the code, and the code goes to Pete's phone. Pete's on the frigging golf course, so it doesn't answer, so I've missed the code. Now you can do the little double click Apple Pay on it. Bank game changer. It's a game changer. It is. This is a totally contradictory. No, because what company. I'm saying is that's the one that I like. There's so much that I don't like. But, Apple IDs is a killer. Yeah, but how many people have lost their jobs because of these friggin'. These mm. Apple IDs, mate. Because obviously, when you've got kids with iPads and things like that, they've got their own separate ones. And it's like the passwords for them. Uh, that one's. I don't know my out. Apple ID. <laughs> email part. How many passwords is there in the. In the it's mad, isn't it? Well, I've, my, I've had my email since school, and I'm actually embarrassed when people ask me my, <laughs> my email address. Because it's hot a hot mail. Fox. <laughs> hot fox. Hot e fox. Too hot to trot. Kaz's is like blondie one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Sex goddess. That's the problem when you when you keep them, in it? Like, you know what? I, I kind of get that. But like the one, the one in the, the restaurants as well, because you go there and you, you know, you shouldn't really be looking at phones, but you look at people in restaurants now and they're all just looking at phones. What, and they go, what if your phone dies? Yeah. Yeah. That, I always think that as well. Like when you've got your um, like tickets on the plane and things like that on them. Your phone dies. You, you know, when, when you had to have all those codes for the, um, like, COVID traveling, mm. you had to have all that COVID passport and stuff. If your phone dies, you're like, what? You put some people had folders for that because I used to see all the other oh, ones. Really? All the other ones. They used to have, like, a little clear plastic folder <laughs> with it all, all in, getting all the sheets out. I saw, I remember that, actually, when they had, it was all laminated. I prefer and... that. Old school. You're just old school, aren't you? I'm old school. Yeah, so I agree. I'm I agree old school and proud. Yeah. Because, you know, you miss that little chat at the, the, at the checkout, do you know what I mean? So, oh. Yeah. Sausage and mash for dinner tonight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Meal for one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <Meal> for one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, hi, guys. My weekly wine relates to my uh, dilly dallier of a wife whenever we're out and about uh, and in general, but especially when we're Christmas shopping. As if this task wasn't painstaking enough, she seems to turn into the world's slowest walker who can't help but stick her nose in every shop knowing full well she has no intention of buying anything in them. Uh, what is the point of us spending half an hour before we leave the house writing lists if you're just going to browse through every shop anyway? I've got a solution to this. She can write the list. They can write the list together. Mm. If he's annoyed with her dilly-dallying and browsing, she can browse and he can go and check everything off on the list. If there's anything like you, you'll come back with two of everything and <laughs> missing at least three items off the list. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not good at, at mm. the list. No, I'm, I, I'm not a big list writer either. I am. But if someone else gave, for example, if my mum gave me a shopping list, I'd come back, it'd be the wrong size, the wrong colour, the oh, wrong friggin' scented, ca scented candle she'd write down. I'd come in with like bed linen and she wanted cinnamon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm doing a list at the moment for like our house improvements, what we need to do. And I need you to go through it, like irrigation. It's still on the golf course, okay? <laughs> Irrigation. The driveway is smashed in because of all the lorries we've had on the driveway. Mm. Um, and I've wrote a big list and you're just not going to look at it, are you? You can write it and, and I'll look at it. So I, it makes I, you feel good. <laughs> a bit, all our posts, like I normally put it on Pete's desk and the pile's that high now. So I've moved it from the desk to the kitchen island and it's still not done. Built up quite a bit now. I feel like Santa. There's like 50, <laughs> there's like 50 letters in there, Pete. It's just so irritating. Well, you can Santa do that now. You can time. do that tonight. I will do that tonight. Don't you worry. You can do homework. <laughs> there is no homework. It's Christmas week. Oh, God, it is, yeah. Think, you can do that. No, it's Christmas week. Are they not doing no homework this week? Some of the mums are complaining about no homework. Are they? They won't get any complaints. But you're not one of them. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> no. No, I'm fine with that. All right. Well, listen, do you know what? We're going to change up this episode a little bit today, right? So we've uh, we've put it out there to ask us anything. Anything goes. It's the therapy crouch. It's a safe space. We can answer any, any questions. Honestly. And, and they've been coming in. We're going to answer honestly. Honestly. And to the best of our knowledge. <laughs> it's not mastermind. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. Would you rather have a nipple-sized hand or hand-sized nipples? 
for the first one. No, no. <laughs> Definitely isn't mastermind, is it? <laughs> Definitely isn't mastermind. Cheers, James. I'd rather have a hand-sized nipple. A hand-sized nipple? It's a big old nip. But you wouldn't want a hand the size of a nipple. What are you going to do with hands like, yeah? yeah I, you'd I'm have a t- tiny this. little nipple to a hand. Fella. No, you'd have a, yeah, because at least you can hide your monstrous strong <laughs> <in a> nipple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, burger nips. I think there's a few people out there with hand-sized nipples, are they? Yeah. So my, one of my friends got burger nips. <laughs> burger nips. Burger nips. Oh, wow. That's a retro Moving on. Show. That's a retro show. Though, Moving on. <laughs> All right. Oh, you don't want to name your friend, do you? No, I don't want to talk this n- don't, nonsense. Don't want to talk nipples. I don't want to talk. I want to, I want to go more on conspiracy theories. Yeah. <laughs> we should do an episode on conspiracy All right. theories. Okay. All right. Scousers love a conspiracy they love theory. A, they love a conspiracy theory. I've got loads. All right. All right. Well, they've got this one from Melanie, actually. Was COVID real? No. no. Well, <laughs> I just made up. <laughs> it was real, but there was something fishy going on. Definitely was real, but there was definitely something fishy going oh, on. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't have the time of pod for that. Uh, Melanie, uh, she says, uh, love the pod. What were your first childhood memories? My childhood memories, a lot of like playing out in the street in hot summer days. I feel like when you were young, <laughs> seasons used to be more prevalent I think is that they're word the ones that you remember though that's why because they were so good you know hot summers cold winters remember we used to live on a hill and the, like the, the driveway was like flags and it had like a little thing and i used to have this little frog and we used to pretend it was a stream and the little frogs would jump over the street i remember that it's childhood memory i, I always remember holidays oh, you, had a, you had a frog a toy frog oh <laughs> i remember <laughs> our sean being frog. getting frightened with a mask on holiday we were babies. I remember my shoulders being burned in Malta and I had blisters on them and I was little. Great times. Great times. Good times. Um, burnt shoulders. I, I, I just, a lot of mine involved football, but I, I remember, you know, mum, mum, I mean, I'd get up so early, like five o'clock, and, and I wouldn't wake anyone up. I'd go downstairs, and I don't know if you, you lot probably be too young for this, but trans world sport, um, because obviously there was no, there was no, like, it was one to five, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. One to four. Um, so Trans World Sport beyond like BBC Two or whatever channel it was on. We used to get up early four. and there'd be that little girl with the clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the telly because the they didn't even start girl, the yeah. programmes program. yet. Really? You used to watch that your whole life. You didn't sleep as a baby. Yeah, I know. You were mm. nocturnal. That girl with the thing, yeah. And then, uh, so Trans World Sport beyond it was brilliant. You'd get sport from all over the world. But then they'd just wait for the football bit and you'd be like, it'd only be like five, ten minutes long. But you'd go, yes, here it is. And I'd buzz off the football bit. But then obviously I had a few videos and I got videos bought for me and I'd just come down and watch the, watch the football videos. Just, I'd watched every goal from Italia 90, so I'd have been nine. At every single goal. And I played that every day for about two years. Really? So I could cool recite, story, bro. I could recite every goal. <laughs> what a dull childhood you had. <laughs> Fancy watching like repeated football. Goals, goals, like, goals. Like the hell is that Every single morning. Like so, every no, guy. Did, I remember that, Roberto that explains a lot, actually. Italy, David Platt against Belgium. You know, L- uh, Lothar Mateus scored a couple of belters in that World Cup. You had uh, Roger Miller. He should do a little dance for Cameroon. Okay, babe, we want to keep our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> river, we want here. our listeners to stay engaged this Christmas. <laughs> Not you bore them to tears. God. Uh, yeah. Lucy says, "Will you be touring in 2024?" Therapy Crouch on tour. That's enough of you, if they baby. show us the big books, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> no, is the answer. <laughs> we, we, see, we see enough no, of each other. We're on tour as well, do we? No, um, the whole tour and thing isn't an exciting... Pr- pr- <laughs> is that a joke? Prospect. Pick up a prospect. The, the, you know, the thought of touring is an exciting prospect. Well done. But I'm so happy at the moment, mm. you know, being in my house, sitting on the, you know, I feel like that is a lot of pressure for now. Like, I'm loving what we're doing here. And hopefully people are still enjoying it too. What, what, and, you know, we can, we can see, never say, you know, you have so much success with Crouchfest mm. and stuff like that. And you absolutely love it. And, you know, but it's a huge commitment and you spend like nearly a year with the boys planning it and, you know, putting your life and soul into it. Well, the, what, what's nice about this is that we're just comfortable, you know, we're in our house and, you know, there's, it's a close-knit team. And, and, and the worry is obviously taking it on tour. It's like, you know, 
obviously we don't see who's who's listening to this and uh, and I know there's a lot of see, people See that's but... exciting to me I'd like to see them we've got some freaky fans out there going by these messages we get sent in mm. yeah. I want to meet these weirdos <laughs> Race Day Jack at that yeah. Race Day Jack God we need legend. an update on yeah, him yeah get in touch he Race featured Day Jack. on our first app. we need to know what Race Day da- Jack is doing this Christmas right Jack get in touch I want to know what you're up to here's one from Eliza would you rather be tall or short tall what do you reckon I'm going to say to that? Tall. I, I, I do sometimes wonder what it'd be like to be short. Like, I'd, I've never known it. Even when I was a baby, I was taller. So I literally don't know any other way. And I would say, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I wish it was a little bit taller. I wish it was a little bit taller. taller. I yeah. wish it was the baller. You never hear people go, oh, I wish it was just like a little bit. Now, does anyone go like, oh, I want to be a bit, sh- a bit shorter? Because I am probably the tallest of tall. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't want to be any shorter. Exactly. So I don't. Not even an inch. Not even a couple of inches. Get the six five. Depends where you could put them. <laughs> I'd like to be. I a... could lose five inches, still be tall, and put them put them somewhere else. Wouldn't that be? Would that be fabulous? <laughs> I, I'd like to be a bit taller. I think I'm shrinking. You know, I'm five foot nine, which is quite tall for a girl. But I always look short next to Peter, mm. so no one thinks I'm tall. Would you be taller? Yeah, I would. Mm-hmm. Would you want to be six foot though? Yeah. Would you? Mm. Six foot club? Six foot club. Our, our kids, our girls will probably be six foot. Mm. Yeah, they will. So I, I think I'll answer, answer the question. I'd was, like to have smaller uh, feet. <laughs> Shorter feet. <laughs> Shorter feet. <laughs> Shorter feet. Mm. I've got long feet. It's not a bad thing. I don't like small feet. I've mm. got a phobia of them. But I don't, I, I wish mine were just one size smaller. Yeah. So it, I think if size I was eight. one size smaller, it'd be, it'd be a lot e- bit easier for me. 12. But they, you're, you're, you're kind of 13 almost. Yeah, but that's fine. You get all the f- shoes left yeah, in the if sale. If I was one more, it'd be horrendous. Mm. I'd be struggling big time. So I'm all, listen, I'm all right how I am. Um, God how doesn't it, make mistakes. Remember that. <laughs> there we go. We're all God's creatures. And he made us. <laughs> You're a fucking creature. <laughs> You're a creature. Hello, I am. I know how, I am. <laughs> how do you manage um, the, your work life balance? I have five kids oh. in work and I haven't managed to pee by myself in 19 years. I'd love to have some time I just for me, but sister. I never seem to get it. The work life balance is something Evans. we massively struggle with here. You know, we've said it before, you know, you, you want your own career, but then you get the mum guilt and. Can you be as good as 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 good of a mum as you want to be if you're working? And but I, I think for you as a person, it's good to have your own interests and hobbies. But you know, I think you have to you have to manage. It, that. It's hard. Well, not hard, but you know, it, it can be full on at times when we're working loads, and then you come home and you've got to do homework for four kids, dinners and bath time and bed. And but I, I actually wouldn't have it any other way. I think it's better to be busy than 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 not. You know what I mean? It's mm. like like you can always try and scale that back. I, I w- in 2024, I would like to have a bit more me time. Mm. And by me time, I mean not. I need to have like some space away from you. You do need that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. And by me you time, can have that if you need I that. don't want that. I'm joking. But by me time, what I want to do is horse ride. Because yeah. I haven't been for six months. Yeah, you haven't mentioned it a lot, the horse ride. Because I haven't off? been. I haven't had a second to go. Mm. And it's killing me. Because yeah. wh- on my day off, I have to do the house or do this or yeah. make sure everything's working at home and get on top of the kids' stuff. So I would love to be able to designate a day to horse ride. So, so I, I loved... I, I, so I don't I, like doing anything after school. Once the kids are home, I'm with them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't like doing anything in the nighttime. So that's not even an option. When I was in football, I thought it'd be really good to kind of be my own boss and like do do my own things. But like with football, what was so good about it was the season was mapped out. I knew where I was going to be on what days. Yeah. And, and I could kind of plan my, where my days off were going to be for the whole year. Mm-hmm. Whereas now when you're kind of like doing your own thing, yeah, it's great to be busy because, you know, you need, you need to be busy, you need to be active, you need to be doing things. But then also you, you, sometimes you can get on top of you and you're like, oh no, I'd, and you try and it's, it's hard to kind of find that balance. So, mm. I, I, you know, I get where Evans is coming from. Good Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're even given that energy. 
<laughs> Don't give me energy. All right. How do you keep the spark with the kids? I just feel bloody exhausted and low patience come the evening. B. Fill your B. You know. Huh? Who are you, Jay Z? Are you ready, B? <laughs> no, it, it is hard. And I think, you know, I, I'll scroll through Instagram and find these like really good, like arts and crafts things to do and have all the intentions of doing all these nice things. And then just don't get around to it. They come home, they're fighting. They have the dinner. They won't, they want to go on YouTube. You know, it's, it's hard to, you know, I'm looking forward to, the Christmas holidays where we, I've bought loads of board games. We're going to be, what's it called? Tech, tech free? Tech digital free. De digital detox. We're going to do a digital detox. We're going to play games. We're going to do it the good old fashioned way. And if we do that, you've got to do it as well. Like. Yeah. So I, 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 I suggest putting like everything in the, in the safe, like iPads, phones, the lot. Yeah. And like going out and experiencing stuff. Mm. It's talking of board games, what board games have you bought this year? I bought the Squishmallow Monopoly. Squishmallow Monopoly. What's that? It's a Squishmallow edition. I've heard the kids say Squishmallow, but what does that mean? You know them big teddy things that they've got? Uh, Squishies. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I bought a Squishmallow Monopoly edition. Mm. I bought this like fart and this donkey thing that farts. I thought Boys it was love that. Quite funny. Very, very umbrella. <laughs> yeah. Very umbrella for you. That yeah, life. exactly. Yeah, Ross is coming around for, for dinner, is he? Um, <laughs> What else have I got? I got Operation. Yeah. An game. old one. You know, and... They like playing Uno as well. Teaches them determination and patience. Yeah. You know, there's... Fucking okay, no, hell, you, you need some of that. Yeah, but there, there is like a little bit of kind of science behind games. Mm. There is. Yeah, you ever no, played that Picture Rica? That's quite a good one. No. Mm -hmm. You can't, can't remember how you play, but it's, it is a good one. Picture yeah. Rica? We yeah. love Articulate. Or, or Pictionary or something like that. Like get the kids drawing. Mm. Be good. Articulate. We got the kids. Uh, kids articulate, which is great. Shoot as well. Yeah, yeah, but that's even too hard for me. That one, the kids on. <laughs> I'm not bad at triple pursuit. Um, do your weekly wines ever spill over to later on in the day? We've had a we couple. kind of vowed to put it to bed here and there and then. We cheers to it, and you know we put it to bed. We take it on board. I'm still waiting for Pete to take a few of the things that I've brought up on board. However, um. I think once or twice it's... Once or twice we've had a... I remember we had a break once and we had to go back and record and we didn't want to because things got a little bit heated. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Do you remember that one? <laughs> so that. awkward though because I've got like my family in the room and no one ever sticks up for me. Like you should be on my side. I know, but you're always in the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lisa, honest. You put me through that the ringer, babe, true. you do. But like that... Listen, that we've, that not often has that happened. Like, give me that face. What face? That face. Do the face you do. I don't. Do. All right, let's move on. Things that's going to spill over, spill over. Into the day. <laughs> Things do spill over. Yeah. I do feel like not you... Not often. No. Not often. We don't argue. No, we're not, not, not much. Professional settle. Not much. This is one from Veronica. It's a question for me. Um, have you ever dabbled in cross-dressing? Yes. When? You. What? You, t we've talked about it before. You're partial. You were partial to Stacey's maxi dresses on nights out. <laughs> And you know, if someone's got a fair coat on, yeah, I do like doing that. You'd li like to do that. I, I Luckily, you can't fit into my shoes. Yeah. Thank I, God. I wouldn't say I enjoy cross dressing. I just think it's funny to come in in a long Grab pleaser, like it's a robot. Yeah, yeah, it's a pleaser <laughs> at the end of the evening just to put on a dress, come in, have a laugh, and then and then walk back out. Okay. Okay. Um, which celebrity couple would you both like to double date with? Double date? Does that mean that no, doesn't not, mean not, swing? We're not wife swapping. No, <laughs> no. We, we, we're just going out for dinner with a couple celebrities. Pick one, pick two, pick a couple. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? That's a good question. Elton and David. Oh yeah, that's you know, good. They don't you, drink though. Yeah, but they you what? don't have to drink to have fun. Okay. I just think you know, I have met Elton a couple of times, and but I just you know I'm fascinated by him. And he must have the most incredible stories and, you know, I think they're a laugh. Got a few mutual friends who love them, so. That is a good one, to be fair. Mm -hmm. we'll, go, we'll go with that. How do you ensure you stay grounded in the stressful world? Grounded in the stressful world? The rain said that. I think we're both pretty grounded people. Mm -hmm. You know, we know how lucky we are, and but we've both come from quite normal backgrounds, although people seem to think you were 
it's always quotes that you're in a middle class background, which always makes me laugh. No, but I don't. And I, I'm from the Scouse gutter. <laughs> you know. You're not wrong. <laughs> you know, I was dragged up in the heart of Liverpool. <sighs> um, but I, I think we're both from, you know, good families and very normal backgrounds. I think it's important to whatever kind of job you're in, you know, whatever way it takes you. You need to keep the people around you that um, have always been there. Yeah, I agree. You know, keep away. it. I, I like keeping my family close, and I think you know it, that. I think it all just stems to being a good person and doing what's right. Mm -hmm. You know, we can all have a laugh and joke, but people know what's right and wrong. Yeah, yeah, no, totally agree with that. What's your favorite Simply Red song? Oh, so many. It's only love doing, doing its thing, baby. baby. Tune. But stars, I like stars. Hol stars holding back the holding years. Holding back the years. Oh, back the years. Holding I've back the years. Wasted all my tears. Only films absurd. You know when Rodney gets married, have you seen that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasted yeah. all oh. those. Holding back the years. Fairground. Years. That's a good one. Yeah. Fairground and stars are not on my stars. What? One of us from the stars. Straight into your arms. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I hope you can. Money's too tight to mention as oh, an absolute belter. Name, you've got to name one though. One. What was your... Gunter it's Hedley. only love. Only love. All right, I'll hold him back to years. Come for. Or if you don't know me by now. Oh. <sighs> Big Simply Red fans, are we? <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love uh, Mick. Abby. Shout out to Mick Hucknall. Forever. My heart. <laughs> This one's uh, directed to you, Abby. Please. Call me Abby. Think she's you, calling you say that? me Abby. This is Sam. It says, please, what lipstick brand colour do you wear? But if I, I have been using the same lip liner for 20 odd years. Mm. It's Rimmel Cappuccino. And when I see them in the shop, I buy all of them because they're like bloody gold dust. Are they really? And I love them. So you can have uh, the Rimmel Cappuccino lip lip liner and then rub your lips together and it kind of gives you that kind of natural lippy tone uh, and you can just put a little bit of lip gloss on or oh, I'm a huge fan of oh god what's the name of it this L'Oreal lipstick that I love and it's kind of like a lippy blushy colour and I'm a big fan of a Charlotte Tilbury um, pillow talk thanks oh. I'll bear that mad cool, cool story bro <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I think I'd have so much more success with this podcast if you weren't on it. <laughs> you know, I could talk about so much more that I'm interested in. You could stick well, to your football. Do your own one then. I God might just sake. do. You, Watch you, out, 2024. You should do your own one, babe. You can talk about lipstick till the cows come home. How dare you? What? What? So is so you think if I had a podcast on my own, I'd be talking about lipstick? No, you were particularly talking about lipstick there on that just then. If I'm that uninteresting, why would you be married to me for nearly 20 years? Why would you be with me for I 20 years if you think my only my only um, chat would be makeup? No, the girls just ask you Actually, about don't lipstick. even talk about makeup, ever. She just asked you about lipstick. Yeah. And you, you, you talked about it. But I gave you a bit of stick because you, you said I was banging on about the 1990 World Cup. Yeah, but that's boring. That meant a lot to me. <laughs> My lipstick's not boring for me. I like it when you wear it. You look beautiful in it. Shut up. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> what? I don't know how it got there. <laughs> uh, I'm annoying you now. Stop doing that. Do what? That face. What face? Like, Do your face. Put your hand down as well. What <laughs> Resting it on the... Resting it on the... You're looking at me like that. <laughs> What do you want me to do with this T-Rex? Stop. You know, you know how hard it is? To, there's so many cushions. What's that thing you know like that? <laughs> Pete sits there like that all, all the right. time. We get your cushions to fucking do on them. <laughs> okay, go. Okay, where, please, 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 please tell me where you got the wooden horses from. I can only imagine my other half's face if I bring one home. It has to become a reality. Love the pod, Abby. So I got my antique horses from Andrew Martin. And uh, he saw some from an antique dealer, I, I imagine. But yeah, they're beautiful. One of my favourite things in the house. Yeah, that's absolutely stunning. Um, <laughs> Ross just keeps plonking them on the glass table like every week when we move our lounge around. Um, Lisa says, was Pete a good birthing partner? To be fair, you were. 
the, with the last baby, we weren't really talking. So it was going to be my friend Liberty. I didn't want him anywhere near me. You know, I, you know, my hormones were out of control and, you know, I was completely irrational and didn't want him in there. But he managed to worm his way in. He is a good birthing partner, but obviously I've been induced every time. You know, I've, I've had natural births, but I have been in, induced. And, you know, it's a kind of a nil by mouth scenario going on. Mm. Pete loves to just go over to Nando's or Pizza <laughs> Hut. And I'm like that on half a Lucasade sweet sucking it. And Pete's like that stuff in his face with like a halloumi chicken You're doing spicy. great, babe. You're doing great. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going home. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the only flaw, but you you are very good. What constitutes a good birthing partner? I think right. someone just there to support you. You know, Peter's he's not freaked out by the whole thing. Mm. Um, I you're quite really emotional. Enjoyed every you know, read four birth and first, I loved every one of them. I think it was actually a great day for me personally. I know you're in a lot of pain, and you did a lot of the work, most of the work. And uh, so annoying when like Pete's just it. taking pictures of me, and I'm like sitting like bouncing on this ball like a whale. I video, you know, I video trying to get the whole this thing and like make it like a documentary. My nose was like that wide. I was like, and I just have boobs like, like that big. Away, like, how you feeling, babe? <laughs> <laughs> it was like nine months. The film, nine months. Yeah, but no, you you are very good. Well, I listen. You you're very good at what you do as well. And, uh, well, I've had me, <laughs> I've had the whole fam the whole family in the room when we give birth. Mm -hmm. Like my sister was, my mom experience. and my sister were there for a couple as well. You know, Amazing you, times. Like we just beautiful. we just bunk everyone in the room. They're staying. I quite enjoyed that. Ask me anything. I think that could be a thing. Yeah, it's nice. It's just, I just love hearing kind of like the questions that, that we've come up with. What's going on mm. Yeah, cross dressing and birth and part three me a little bit, but yeah. All right, let's get on to some agony abs. Um, hi, Abby and Pete. I'm a woman living in a in a house share in a man's full of, world. You know, basically, yeah, literally this uh, woman living in a house share full of men, and it's safe to say I'm at the end of my tether. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I have been cohabiting with the boys for around twelve months now, and at the beginning, everything was hunky dory, if you know what I mean. However, after the novelty of catching my rather buff housemates coming out of the shower wore off, the bugbears of living in a testosterone-filled flat share are taking over my life. Not only are they the world's scruffiest people, Ugh, they leave their dirty there. dishes all over the house, never do any communal cleaning, leave the toilet looking something out of the world's toughest prisons. They also dominate our TV viewing. As a football widow yourself, I'm sure this is no news to you, but why is there literally always football on the TV? One or two Saturday afternoons I could live with, but it seems to start on a Friday and go on till Monday, with the occasional Wednesday evening also ruined. Thursday uh, as well now. Uh, uh, yeah. It's taken over this football. <laughs> it's catching on. <laughs> it is taking over the world. I would love to live in my own space, but I cannot afford it. And also don't think I should have to out of principle. So how can I get my living space clean again and also get Love Island back on the big screen? Hannah from London. She should just put porn on and they'll all definitely watch that instead of football. <laughs> she going to enjoy that. <gasps> Problem solved. Or at least she will hate it. Do you, know what? do you know what though? If you play Love Island to a boy, they do get hooked quite quickly. Mm. Like you get hooked onto it. Yeah, you put on this drivel and then um, after a while you just get sucked in. Like, like I'm a celeb, Pete's like, like, I'm not watching that. Watched every episode. He's like that in bed at five to nine. <laughs> waiting for it. <laughs> you know, and so many shows. You know, I, I think it's it's so hard living with boys, you know, even just having you lot over last weekend. You know, the mess she's made, the, the dishes, there's cups everywhere, there's bottles left on the couch, socks stuffed down the couch, wet towels everywhere. It's just gross. There is so much football on as well. And I do, I try and be selective, but at the end of the day, it's my job as well. I need to know what's going but on. The thing is, I've noticed you watching more football lately, and I'm thinking, is that a crack beginning to show in our relationship? No, it's like I need to be, I need to be across it. Do you know what I mean? I be... uh, no, I think it could be an underlying issue. I really. <laughs> so let's nip that in the bud, shall we? <laughs> I think it is. Okay. I'm going to put it out there. What's on tonight? Do you want to watch something together? I was enjoying Robin Hood. I've never well, seen. I watched the entirety of it while you were snoring. What the film or the series? We watched, the she's film. never seen Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Oh, with Kevin Costner. Yeah, yeah, it's a good film. That Morgan Freeman in it as well. Mm. Yeah. I couldn't believe it was 1992. Yeah, years ago, isn't it? 30 years old. The, the new one they made's good as well with the guy with the gladiator. What's his name? 
Russell Crowe. Yeah, that's good. Uh, all right, well, listen, we'll, we'll watch something tonight, eh? I feel like having a little pub dinner tonight. Really? I do. Oh, the match is on. <laughs> Get off me, wham. <laughs> Uh, hi guys recently started dating a guy I think he's amazing uh, he brings out the best of me treats me like a princess and we're constantly laughing and he makes me very happy go me it's however I'm all end girl I'm all end <laughs> you hate me today don't you I can just tell no, she just like hates me I'm just at the end of your tether what have I actually done between you've done nothing. you're just a bit tired you've done nothing Will you stop saying I do that, nothing? Like seriously, that, like this is point. getting to, it's like actually point. winding me up. Seriously, stop I'm it. not talking about you, your da- fathering abilities because that's amazing. No, I, what do you mean? Do nothing? How do you know what I'm doing behind the scenes? Like we've got loads. Going I am up. a girl. We're going to. I am a we're girl. Going to out tomorrow, me and you we're booked a whole, we? whole day. Yeah, we're going. To, we're going out tomorrow. No, we're not. We're shopping tomorrow. We're not. You've got we're your not. podcast tomorrow and your darts thing. Days tomorrow. It's Tuesday. Wednesday. We're going out on Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. We're out. Just don't feel like I fit in your life anymore. You're in my life, babe. You're the priority in this. Anyway, she, just don't don't bring her down. She's having a great time, this new fella. <laughs> I've introduced him to my nearest and dearest, and the reception from them was lukewarm, to say the least. Oof. They haven't said anything in particular, but you just know when you your get, you best know, friends are you? being off with you. I've asked them uh, what they think of him, and I get the, yeah, he's nice. Well, you guys seem really happy. Uh, this is completely different to how uh, they have acted when I've introduced them to other guys. And I just know something deep down is off. I want to confront them about this, but I don't want to cause needless argument between my friends. I can't see myself splitting up with him. What do you guys think? I think it's a very tough situation when, you know, one of your friends are with someone that you don't like mm. or one of your family members or whatever. Because you're stuck between, you know, if you love that person, you don't want to hurt, and you can see that they're clearly happy. You don't want to hurt the feelings, so you kind of biding your time for it, for the shit to hit the fan, and then you can say, "We hated him anyway. You're too yeah, good yeah, for him, yeah, or whatever." Yeah. You don't lose your friend, do you? Yeah, and if and, and if if you feel they, you know, if you feel like someone's in for the long run, again, that puts makes it even more difficult for you to air your feelings because you know you're going to be stuck with this person. I think. It, it kind of if she asks I think as as the from the friend's point of view I think you can't give but your opinion I, I but if she a... asks you like genuinely what do you think you say just I just think these kind of things be diplomatic about it but just give your point across because and... if my friend met a guy or a girl or whatever I would be I feel like I would be honest as well yeah with my friends your best mates yeah you could I think you can Kind of like it's your duty, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because you're so blinded by the initial love or whatever attraction. I think um, if you think you know, you know it, yeah, but you right you would never tell any of your friends if you didn't like their partner ever. Uh, no, if they, if they asked you, what do you think? You'd say you'd have to say something, wouldn't you? The thing is, do my do they only sound like new? Do my grow on he might grow on them, mightn't he? You can always make a bad first impression. It's all about the first impression. Mm, I think talk it out. And, you know, if they love you, they'll, and you love, you're, you're happy with him, you know, they've said their piece and they're this, they're, that's it. And then you can just cohabit, I think. Cohabit? Yeah, whatever the word is. You can exist. Coexist. You can exist together. <laughs> um, all right, last one. Um, Agony Ab, I'm um, hoping you can help me out. Me and my long term girlfriend have decided to take the next step in our relationship, move in together. All good so far. However, I'm in a bit of a shit situation of my own making. Throughout our relationship, I have exaggerated slightly on my DIY <laughs> skills around the house. Early on, she mentioned that uh, this is something she found really attractive in a guy, decided to run with it. I've, been, I've done stints on building sites as a labourer. I had a good backstory. And I'm able to do the odd job, like change a plug, etc. But nothing as major as what I have made out. Having definitely overstated my involving in fitting bathrooms and kitchens in my glory days as a labourer, <laughs> I have done my best to avoid being confronted about this due to the fact we've never lived together. Unfortunately, this has come back to bite me on the arse and I've since overheard her telling her friends that she would be happy to find a doer-upper as Paul <laughs> can turn his hand to anything and be able to do a lot of the work for free. <laughs> No way. And now I lie awake in bed dreading house hunting with the love of my life, knowing that ultimately it's not something that I can get away with. What Aww, should I do? That's quite cute. Aww. I like that. What he can do, if he wants to keep this lie going, mm-hmm. he can get himself on YouTube, on the how-tos, on the how-tos, how to build a shelf, how to, you know. She's talking about like knocking through bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
and like yeah, redoing I, I'm the bathroom. I'm fascinated by these videos on YouTube, like women or, or men, like ripping off skirting boards, adding beading, you know, painting it, the, the, that filler thing looks so satisfying and like putting filler in, carpeting their stairs, sanding down. I can watch that for hours. Mm. No, it's, for it, hours. it's so impressive when people so can, impressive. Do, can, can like, do that. It's, like, it's a huge skill. Like that would be a major turn on for me. Intense. Get the YouTube. <laughs> you know, I'll have a sledgehammer in the <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, I just shudder to think what the bathroom Peter looks the like. Has <laughs> no, you can, you can, but, sledgehammer going through here. Yeah. You know, We're going to knock through here, babe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, house would come down. Pete, there's still time. <laughs> there's still time to build me my... You could get a pre-pack. Yeah. Stable. Mm. And make build it, it. Build it for me. Build the pen and buy the donkey. All right, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put this to the test. I'm going to try and build you a stables in the garden. I'm going to document it, and I'm going to I'm going to show everyone the. But do you mean result. this? Yeah, hundred percent. I could do it easy. You're going to shake <laughs> on it. Oh, you're on camera. <laughs> you're really going to do that for me? I'll show you a picture of exactly what I want. You know, you can buy sheets of felt. You can put the felt on watertight. You can you know, get um, reclaimed um, slates. Make the roof. Bear in mind, I've never built anything in my Those life. Those prefabs, Pete, just throw them off. They, they build themselves, basically, mate. Literally. <laughs> Couple Is of nail, nail guns. You'll be right to say. <laughs> oh, I'd love a nail gun. <laughs> Are you? Is it going to be incredibly attractive if you come home one day and I've built a stable? That would just break my heart for the good. Little builder's bum hanging done. off the back of his kex. <laughs> Don't leave it too late. I'll have it done, babe. No problem. Oh, good advice. All right. You promise. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Does it have to be? Can you give me a year? Like, no. so do you know when it will be? Obviously, I'll try and do it in January. For spring, January. For, in, for spring, no, Ross. For spring, spring's the perfect time for it to be wet complete. Okay. Because then the grass will, will be like not as wet, and then the donkey will have a nice grazing section. <laughs> okay. All right. New Year's resolution. I'm going to build stuff. All right? Mm. Okay. All right, then. Well, listen, you know, it's this Boxing Day. Uh, I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas. Um, we've really enjoyed doing this po the podcast this year. I mean, it's just gone from... from Boxing from, from, from Day is it? just a pyjama, mm. leftover food. Yeah, nice walk. And listen, listen to your favourite podcast. I love a walk on Boxing Day. Oh, the big walk, big coats on, take the dogs, all the kids. Mm. See loads of other families doing it as well. Mm. And then get on the couch after that and have a nice... Egg watch nog. the match. <laughs> <laughs> With an eggnog. All right, enjoy yourselves, kids. Merry Christmas, everyone.